just three weeks left in the session and the House and Senate are still miles apart on police reforms. That's why Governor Walls today went into full court press mode. Minnesotans are watching and they're watching us and there's a moral imperative for us to do something. He brought along Lieutenant Governor Flanagan and six key players on the reform effort happening at the state capitol. I hope the Senate doesn't treat our lives like a bargaining chip. And I truly mean that. And I hope they're listening right now. The DFL House began working on police bills in January, a continued response to George Floyd's death, then added more after Dante Wright was killed earlier this month. The GOP-controlled Senate is yet to give a hearing to any of the bills. For all of our safety, we have to take steps to improve accountability and public trust. Reforms passed so far this year by the House include civilian oversight boards, restricting no-knock search warrants, an early warning system to detect problem officers, giving families more access to body camera footage, and restrictions on equipment violation traffic stops. I'm very conscious of, of our police and National Guard feeling very de demoralized because of the lack of appreciation, and that is another very valuable thing. Senate Majority Leader Paul Gazelka says he hasn't closed the door entirely, but he sees no connection between these reforms and what happened to George Floyd and Dante Wright. Police and the National Guard can do their job, uh, and they have to be able to intervene, and, and they have to be able to stop crime. The action will now shift to the conference committee, where a small group of lawmakers will try to hash out the differences between the House public safety bill and the Senate's version. For CARE 11 News, I'm John Croman.